and I will share with you my top 10 tips to create the best signing experience possible in DocuSign. Welcome back to Solisan's channel. It's Sofian here. I'm the founder of Solisan Consulting, an agency on a mission to help financial services businesses grow by automating paperwork. If you clicked on this video, it's because you care about creating a great user experience. And I want to congratulate you for that. It's a smart decision because anything you do to make the life of your signers easier will benefit you 10 times. By choosing to make things easy for your signers, whether they are your clients, your colleagues, contractors, or anyone else, you're actually helping yourself. I'll now explain why I say this, and I will share with you my top 10 tips to create the best signing experience possible in DocuSign. The main reason you're using DocuSign is because you wanna save time to be more productive, to make more money. And the best way to do this is to create the best signing experience for your signers, because that will help you achieve just that. If you want to eliminate potential back and forth between yourself and the signers of your documents, your users shouldn't have to think about what they need to do on the document. If your signers aren't confused about what action they need to take on a document, they are less likely to make mistakes and then you are minimizing the risks of having to follow up with them by phone or email if you have an incomplete document, for example. This is how you can save time, by removing friction. And the less friction between businesses and their clients, the better the customer experience is and the better clients are going to recommend you and want to buy your services. This is just common sense. So if you make it easy for your signers to understand what they have to do from the first go and don't need your help to complete the documents, you've then won the battle. But it's easier said than done. They will always remember how easy it was to do business with you and how you made them feel. Um, plus, if it's a new client, you only get one very first impression and you don't want it to start with frustration. So how can you create the best signing experience using DocuSign? DocuSign comes with a set of tools that allow you to make things um, easy for your signers. So to avoid frustrations, we need to put ourselves in our client's shoes for a second and think. What annoys you when you receive a document that you need to complete? Well, the very first thing is being asked to print documents and sacrifice my lunch break for a trip to the post office. But let's say that we've already taken care of that because you're using DocuSign. So what's the next best thing or the next most annoying thing? Well, most of my clients' customers complain about having to provide the information they already have. Why should they have to write their names and addresses on documents when the company that sends those documents already got that information. That's stupid, right? Luckily, you can integrate DocuSign with your CRM or any other database with an open API so that the documents are pre-filled with the information stored in your database before they hit your signer's inbox. This is a great way to get clients to sign in no time. They will love it because they've got not much to do, just sign and that's it. Now, the second thing you can do to create the best signing experience is to stop asking your signers to provide the same information multiple times. I remember that the last time I ran to a doctor's appointment, I had to write my name and phone number on various forms and I thought this was just a waste of my time. And obviously because this was happening to me, the guy who's always looking for ways to improve and automate paperwork, I thought I'd mention this to the receptionist. And she was shocked that I was shocked that she was in shock that that was a very slow and repetitive process. Anyway, that's another story. But with DocuSign, you can create rules in your documents that automatically copy the information provided by your signers um, automatically wherever it's needed. And if you're just starting with DocuSign and want to learn how uh, to get started, I recommend that you access my uh, DocuSign crash course using the link in the description of this video. It's totally free. Uh, it'll show you how to get started with the basics. I want you to have it. Now, tip number three is to create mobile friendly forms. Remember the last time you were trying to read a document that wasn't optimized for mobile? Uh, it's a lot of pinching and scrolling through horizontally uh, to read full sentences because a document doesn't adapt to the size of your screen. So when using DocuSign responsive signing, your documents will automatically be converted into a format that adapts to the size of your signer's screens. And you can also include smart sections to create collapsible sections uh, for the portions of the documents that aren't critical, such as uh, reference. Uh, and so that reduces the size of the documents and therefore um, the amount of scroll through that it would have to do if it's a very long document, for example. Tip number four is using tooltips. 
If you're using, if you're sending a document that your signers need to provide information on, they sometimes might be unsure as to uh, what information they need to provide because it's not super clear on the actual source documents. And so when this happens, um, you can help your signers understand better what's expected from them by adding a little text that will appear uh, when hovering over the field in question. So for example, you could just display a little text that would read, if you're in this situation, just provide that type of information. That's really helpful so that you don't have to modify the document itself. You can just add some extra information in DocuSign. Tip number five, adding rules to your fields. There are so many benefits to adding fields, uh, to adding rules to your fields, including a 99.9% .9 guarantee that your documents will be completed correctly. But that doesn't just help you, that also helps your signers navigate the signing process. And there are two main types of rules. You can add validation and conditional rules. The validation rules help your signers because if they try to enter a value that doesn't match the validation rule in a text box, for example, an error message, uh, which is fully customizable, by the way, will pop up to let them know what the error is and how to rectify it. And no, that won't just give them an error message uh, that's confusing, like um, 02123XYZ, like on lovely Windows computers um, back in the days, I hope. Um, I don't know, does it still happen? I, I don't know. Anyways, I'm sending you love and prayers, Windows users. So for example, if your signers enter an international phone number, you can display an error message saying that they must use a national uh, phone number instead. And so for conditional rules, the way they work is that they will hide the fields uh, or display them depending on whether or not those fields are relevant to the situation of the signer, the person who is signing. So your signers won't even be presented with the fields that don't apply to them, uh, which means that they won't be confused and think, okay, do I need to fill this out? Or is it for me or not for me? I'm not sure. So that just removes confusion and therefore less errors in forms and less follow-up. Tip number six is using auto navigation. Auto navigation allows you to choose how DocuSign will help your signers navigate during the signing uh, process. For example, you can choose DocuSign to take them from one page to another. You know, if you've got a very long 30 page or more document, for example, even just two pages, it's up to you. But DocuSign can take them from one page to another, stopping at the top of each page, or take them from one field to the next field, or choose what kind of field, whether they should be required or, or skip the optionals. This can be very useful when you have very long documents um, or very long envelopes with a lot of fields. Tip number seven, using drop down fields. So um, whenever possible in your forms, you should be using drop downs because they help the signer choose from a list of options so that they don't have to type the answer themselves uh, using the keyboards, which is more time consuming. And from a sender's perspective, you know that you'll receive the information in a format that you need because you created a list of options yourself. Again, it's a win-win uh, situation for both sides and it's super easy to implement. And if you want to download uh, my list of pre-built uh, drop-down fields that I use every day, you can watch the tutorial and uh, they will show you how to do just that. Tip number eight, using uh, note fields. If you think that your users might be confused about something in particular on your document and want to provide more information to the document without editing the document itself, uh, it, which is not always possible if you're using federal forms, for example, or forms from a third party, um, instead what you can do is you can add a note field that can contain as much information as you want for your signers. The content of this field will not remain on the actual document itself, uh, they'll just be captured on the audit trail, of course. So for example, you could add a note field that says, uh, for full um, details, please um, check page four. Tip number nine, I can't remember. Oh yeah, tip number nine, using comments. So DocuSign allows senders and signers to communicate via an in-app messaging feature called comments. When enabled, uh, comments can be left to point out some specific uh, clauses or clarification that your signers want. So instead of sending separate emails, if your signer is unsure about something um, and to spread the communication across multiple channels, uh, comments will help you keep a full history of the messages um, that will be added to the envelope, making it easy for all parties, including the envelope, to keep a track of the discussion. It's basically the same as leaving comments on a Google Doc. Tip number 10, customizing the email subject and message that goes with your uh, envelopes 
when sending documents to your recipients. This one is so overlooked and it seems crazy to me because I think it's so basic, but by simply adding more instructions along the way when sending an envelope, that can help your signers know exactly uh, what this is all about and what they need to do. When you're sending an envelope to multiple people, what you want to do is you want to customize the email and subject for each person so that they don't receive the same email. And tip number 11, which wasn't planned, but I just thought about it now, is to create power forms. So instead of being reactive and wait for um, uh, an inquiry or wait for someone to request to fill out a document, you can create the templates um, that you know your signers are going to need to fill out at some point and make those available to your website or a, um, using an intranet if it's for your HR uh, systems, for example. And so again, these are just a few ways that you can use DocuSign to create a better signing experience uh, for your signers. And if you want to learn more about these tutorials, consider subscribing uh, to this channel. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.